Welcome to Al Jazari channel where we will explain the solution of some statics problems. These problems are from the 14 edition of Engineering Mechanics book written by Hibbler and published by Pearson. In a previous video, the resultant of two forces were found using the parallelogram and trigonometry rules. Here, we will learn how to find the resultant force of two or more forces by component. Where the rectangular components of force F shown in this figure are found using the parallelogram law, so that F equals Fx plus Fy. Because these components form a right triangle, they can be determined from Fx equals F cosine theta and Fy equals F sine theta. This method can be used to determine the resultant of several coplanar forces. To do this, each force is first resolved into its x and y components, and then the respective components are added using scalar algebra since they are collinear. The resultant force is then formed by adding the resultant components using the parallelogram law. For example, consider the three concurrent forces in this figure, which have x and y components as shown. Known that the positive direction points to right and the positive y direction points up. So, we have F R X equals F one X minus F two X plus F three X, and F R Y equals F one Y plus F two Y minus F three Y. Generally, we can obtain the components of the resultant force of any number of coplanar forces by the algebraic sum of the X and Y components of all the forces. Once these components are determined, they may be sketched along the X and Y axes with their proper sense of direction and the resultant force can be determined from vector addition, as shown in this figure. From this sketch, the magnitude of FR is then found from the Pythagorean theorem, that is, FR equals square root of F R X square plus F R Y square. Also, the angle theta, which specifies the direction of the resultant force, is determined from trigonometry. Theta equals tan inverse F R Y divided by F R X. Let us now solve a problem. For the shown forces acting on screw I, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Let us give name for each force. Let F1 is equal to 300 Newton, F2 is equal to 400 Newton, and F3 is equal to 250 Newton. Now resolve these forces. F1 is in the positive x direction so it does not have a y component. Consequently, F1x equals 300 Newton and F1y equals 0. For F2, it has two components, F2x and F2y both in positive directions. Where F2x equals F2 cosine 30 is equal to 400 cosine, 30 is equal to 346.41 Newton. And F2y equals F2 sine 30 is equal to 400 sine 30 is equal to 200 Newton. For F3, it has two components, F3x in negative x direction and F3y in positive y directions. Where F3x equals negative 250 multiplied by 4 divided by 5 equals negative 200 newton. The negative sign is because it is in the negative x direction. F3y equals 250 multiplied 3 divided by 5 is equal to 150 newton. This table collect the x and y components for each force. Use these two equations to find the x and y components of the resultant force. So, FRx equals 300 plus 346.41 minus 200 is equal to 446.41 Newton. And FRy equals 0 plus 200 plus 150 is equal to 350 Newton. Once the x and y components of the resultant force are obtained, use this equation to find its magnitude. So, f r equals square root of 446.41 to the power 2 plus 350 to the power 2 is equal to 567.26 newton. Now to find its direction, use this equation. So, theta equals tan inverse. 350 divided by 446.41 is equal to 38.1 degree. Finally, the resultant force that act on the screw I has a magnitude of 567.26 newtons, and inclined by angle equals 38.1 degree measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. 
Another problem. If the resultant force of the forces acting on the shown bracket is to be 750 Newton, directed along the positive x-axis, determine the magnitude of F and its direction theta. Well, it is given the magnitude and direction of two force and the third one is unknown. Moreover the magnitude and direction of the resultant force is given. Of course each force has x and y component. For the 325 Newton force, its x component equals 325 multiplied by 5 divided by 13 and its y component equals 325 multiplied by 12 divided by 13. While for the 600 Newton force, its x component equals 600 cosine 45 and its y component equals negative 600 sine 45. The negative sign because it is directed to the negative y. And for the force F it has two unknown components Fx and Fy both in positive direction. Applying these two rules. Frx equals 325 multiplied by 5 divided by 13 plus 600 cosine 45 plus Fx. And Fry equals 325 multiplied by 12 divided by 13 minus 600 sine 45 plus Fy. It is given that the resultant force is to be 750 Newton directed along the positive x-axis. So, Frx equals 750 Newton and Fry equals 0. Substitute by these values in these two equations and solve for Fx and Fy. This results in Fx equals 200.74 Newton and Fy equals 124.26 Newton. To find the magnitude of F, we have to apply Pythagorean theorem. F equals square root of Fx square plus Fy square. Substitute by the calculated values of Fx and Fy results in F equals 236.09 Newton. The angle theta can be determined from trigonometry. Theta equals tan inverse Fy divided by Fx. So, theta equals tan inverse. 124.26 divided by 200.74 is equal to 31.76 degree. So, the magnitude of F is 236.09 Newton and its direction is 31.76 degree, measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Another problem. For the shown two forces, determine the x and y components of F1 and F2. Then determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction, measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. You know that for any force, we can move the vector represented along its line of action. So, let us move F2 to make its tail coincide with F1 tail like this. Right, resolving F1 in x and y direction give two components. F1x equals 200 sine 45 equal 141.42 Newton, and F1y equals 200 cosine 45 equal 141.42 Newton, and both in the positive direction. And resolving F2 in x and y direction give two components. F2x equals negative 150 cosine 30 equal negative 129.9 Newton. The negative sign because it is in the negative x direction. And F2y equals 150 sine 30 equals 75 Newton, in the positive y direction. So, here are the x and y components of F1 and F2. Now we can calculate the x and y components of the resultant force using these two equations. Consequently, Frx equals 141.42 minus 129.9 equal 11.52 Newton and Fry equals 141.42 plus 75 equal 216.42 Newton. Now, find the magnitude of the resultant force F R using this equation. F R equals square root of 11.52 to the power 2 plus 216.32 to the power 2 equal 216.73 Newton. To find its direction, calculate the value of angle theta by this equation. Theta equals tan inverse 216.42 divided by 11.52 equal 86.95 degree. So, the magnitude of the resultant force of F1 and F2 is 216.73 newtons, and it is inclined by an angle equal 86.95 degree measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. The last problem in this video. 
the shown gusset plat is loaded by four forces. Determine the X and Y components of each force acting on the gusset plate of a bridge truss. Show that the resultant force is zero. Starting with F1, move it so that its tail coincide with the origin point then resolve it to two components F1X and F1Y. Where F1X equals 8 multiplied by 4 divided by 5 equals 6.4 kN and F1Y equals negative 8 multiplied by 3 divided by 5 equal negative 4.8 kN. The same for F2 move it then resolve to F2X equals 6 multiplied by 3 divided by 5 equal 3.6 kN and F2Y equals 6 multiplied by 4 divided by 5 equal 4.8 kN. F3 itself is in the negative x direction so F3x equals F3 equals negative 4 kN while F3y equals 0. The same for F4, F4x equals F4 equals negative 6 kN and F4y equals 0. So, the x and y components of each force acting on the gusset plate of a bridge truss were determined as shown in this table. To find the resultant of these force, use these equations. The result is F R X equals 6.4 plus 3.6 minus 4 minus 6 equals 0. And F R Y equals negative 4.8 plus 4.8 equals 0. So, the resultant force is 0. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, so press like and share it. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. See you again.